Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel, but you can call me Shanti. And today we'll be discussing the myth of Heracles, also known as Hercules. I will probably call him Herc. I've now read you a legend, two fairy tales, and it just felt like the right time to do a myth. And what better one to start with than a Greek myth? If you are familiar with Greek myths, you know how complicated the family tree can be for gods and demigods, and Hercules is no exception. Now the Disney Hercules movie is one of my all-time favorite movies, but man, does it really differ from the original myth. Before I get started, I just want to shout out Bailey Sarian and Robert Welsh, whose Get Ready With Me series inspired me to create this one. If you haven't checked out their channels yet, definitely do. I've linked them in the description down below. Now let's get started. According to legend, Hercules' father was Zeus, who was the head honcho of the Greek gods. And his mother was Alchemini, Alchemine, the granddaughter of the hero Perseus, who killed Medusa, a story for another time. Now, Herc had to be one of the unluckiest babies in Greek mythology because before he was even born, Zeus's wife, Hera, had a vendetta against him. Zeus had cheated and she was pissed. When she found out that Zeus's mistress was pregnant, she did all she could to stop this baby from being born. Even when Herc was born, she sent two snakes to try and kill him. But even at a few months old, he was so strong, he was able to strangle the snakes. In an effort to try and save him, Alchemine even abandoned Hercules in a forest to try and hide him from Hera. Now the goddess Athena found him in the forest, not knowing who he was, took him to Hera so that she could breastfeed him. Hera also didn't recognize the baby. I know, like if you're gonna hate a baby, at least know what he looks like. But she begins nursing him and becomes enraged when he bites too hard on her nipples. So she pushes him away. When she pushes him away, milk squirts out everywhere and creates what we now know as the Milky Way. Athena takes Herc away from Hera and gives him to a human named Amphitryon, who raises him as if he were his own. As he grows up, Herc doesn't really understand his strength, so he accidentally kills his music teacher by hitting him over the head with a lyre when he becomes frustrated that he's not learning fast enough. Amphitryon really doesn't like this, so he sets Herc to watch over his flock as a form of punishment. Now, while Herc is watching over these flock, he overhears some minions, minions. I have to apologize now because there's a lot of hard to pronounce names for me in these stories, and I am undoubtedly gonna mess some of them up, so just bear with me, guys. Herc overhears some minion soldiers talking about how they recently defeated Thebes and took it over. Now, Herc doesn't think this is fair, so he gets together some Thebian soldiers and helps them take back their city. The king of Thebes is so grateful that he gives Herc his daughter's hand in marriage. And who was his daughter, you ask? Why, Megara, of course. They were married and it was said they had three kids before Hera caught on to Hercules having a happy life and she decided to mess with him once again. She casts a spell on Herc so he goes into a fit of rage. When he's in this mad state, he kills his wife and three children. When Hercules comes to, he is devastated and almost kills himself, but one of his cousins stops him and says, go seek forgiveness from Apollo. So Herc goes to the Oracle at Delphi, which is Apollo's Oracle, and asks how he can redeem himself. The Oracle sends him to King Eurystheus of Mycenae to perform 10 labors that eventually become 12. For the first labor, Herc was asked to kill the Nemean lion. Now this lion's fur was impervious to weapons. So Herc had to trap it in its cave in order to pin it down and strangle it with his bare hands. He removed the lion's skin 
and wore its pelt for the rest of his life. Now this immediately freaked King Eurytheus out and he refused to let her through the gates of the city for the remainder of his labors. He also had some servants bury a huge jar in the ground so that he could hide from Hercules if he wanted to. Now for his second task, Herc traveled to the city of Lerna to slay the nine-headed hydra, a poisonous snake-like creature who lived underwater guarding the entrance to the underworld. Herc was smart enough to bring his nephew Iolus with him. Side note, can you imagine being the brother to Hercules? It must be what the third Hemsworth brother feels like. Anyways, so he takes his nephew with him and they quickly learn that when you cut off one of the heads, two more sprout up in its place. To handle this, Hercules would cut off one of the heads and have Iolus burn the wound before it had a chance to sprout more heads. Eventually, they managed to cut off all of the heads and defeat the Hydra. When the Hydra was dead, Herc dipped several arrows in its blood. When they returned, King Eurythes claims that this task doesn't count because Herc had help, therefore adding the 11th task to his labor. For the third task, Herc set off to capture the Golden Hind, which was the sacred pet of the goddess Diana. The Golden Hind was a red deer with golden antlers and bronze hooves. Eurythes had chosen this task because he didn't think that Diana would take too kindly to Herc stealing her prized pet. Herc hunts the creature for a year before the creature becomes too tired to continue running. He shoots the deer with one of his venomous arrows and ends up wounding it. He throws the wounded creature over his shoulder and begins to head back to King Eurythes, but bumps into Diana and Apollo. Gods, am I right? They're just like us. Diana is understandably furious, but luckily Hercules is able to explain to her what he's doing and why he needs to take the deer. Diana heals the hind and allows Herc to go on its way as long as he promises to return the deer once he has shown it to the king. For the fourth task, Hercules is commanded to kill the Aramanthian boar. Now this is a huge boar that kills anything in its path with its enormous tusks. It's quite a long journey to find the boar and Hercules ends up stopping with one of his friends, Pholus, who is a centaur. While staying with him, Hercules wants to drink wine from a nearby cask and Pholus doesn't think this is a good idea because that wine belongs to all of the centaurs. Hercules ends up convincing Pholus that this isn't a big deal and opens the wine and begins drinking it. Now, some nearby centaurs end up smelling the wine and enter the cave ready to attack. They enter armed and Hercules freaks out, so he starts shooting arrows at them and chases them for 20 miles. Now, one of these arrows immediately takes down a centaur and Pholus is really intrigued by what kind of weapon could have taken down one of his large friends so quickly. He picks up the arrow and cuts himself on it and dies immediately from the venom. Herc returns and buries his friend, but continues on his journey. He ends up capturing the boar by trapping it in his net and takes it back to King Eurytheus, who is so frightened, he hides in his jar. Now, Hercules' fifth task was meant to be really humiliating and difficult to accomplish. His task was to clean all of the dung out of the stables of King Augeus. Augeus? King Augeus was said to have the largest cattle herd in Greece. So Herc knew this wouldn't be easy because killing the Hydra was. Unbeknownst to King Eurytheus, Herc asked King Augeus to pay him 10% of his cattle if he could manage the task. Herc succeeds by diverting two rivers to wash through the stables, cleaning them in a matter of hours. King Augeus is furious because Herc had to break the wall of the stables to allow the river to flow through and refuses to pay Hercules, denying having made the bet in the first place. But 
Our hero takes the king to court, where the king's own son serves as a witness against him. Herc wins the battle and is paid. Both he and the son are banished from the kingdom. When King Eurythius hears what happened, he claims that this task doesn't count since Herc was paid for the task. Now, Herc's sixth task was fairly straightforward. He had to travel to the town of Stymphalos and drive away the huge flock of carnivorous birds that had taken up residence in its trees. This time, Athena came to the hero's aid and gave him a magical pair of protala, or noisemakers, forged by the god Hephaestus. Hercules used the crotala to scare away the birds, thus completing the task. Next, Hercules went to Crete to capture a rampaging bull. Now this wasn't your average bull. King Minos of Crete made a deal with Poseidon that he would sacrifice whatever creature that Poseidon sent him. Poseidon sent him a beautiful bull. Don't ask me how bulls can be beautiful. And Minos thought he was too beautiful to sacrifice, so he tried to trick the god by sacrificing another average bull. Poseidon was furious and cast a spell so that Minos's wife would fall in love with the bull and become impregnated by it. Then the bull went on a rampage through the city of Crete. The wife eventually gave birth to the Minotaur. So Hercules drove the bull back to Eurythius, who releases it into the world. And the bull continues to rampage across Greece until Theseus kills it in Marathon. But again, story for another time. Hercules' eighth challenge was to capture the four man-eating horses of the Thracian king Diomedes. With the help of some volunteers, Herc traps the horses by driving them towards the sea. They end up fighting with some soldiers before being able to escape but they do manage to get away with the four horses, though with some casualties on their end. In some version, King Eurythius releases the horses and they go off on their own. And in some versions, Hercules ends up taming them and tying them to his chariot. In both versions, however, King Eurythius considers the task completed. The ninth labor was complicated. He was commanded to steal an armored belt that belonged to the Amazonian queen, Hippolyte. Amazonian women in ancient Greece cut off their right breast in order to better throw their spears. Ouch. At first, the queen welcomes Hercules and upon hearing his story, agrees to give him her belt. However, Hera disguises herself as one of the Amazonian women and goes around spreading a nasty rumor that Hercules has come to kill their queen. A few of the warriors arm themselves and rush down to attack Hercules. Fearing for his life, he kills the queen Hippolyte, steals her belt and manages to escape, but not before battling a few of the Amazonian warriors who attack. For his 10th labor, Hercules was dispatched nearly to Africa to steal the cattle of the three-headed, six-legged monster, Geryon. Hercules manages to get the cattle onto his ship, but not before Geryon catches him and starts to fight him. Hercules kills Geryon by shooting him with one of the poisonous arrows and commemorates the feat by splitting a mountain in half. Surprisingly, stealing the cattle was not the hard part of this quest. The hardest part was getting it back to Eurythius without having someone steal it. A few attempt, but Hercules manages to kill them before they get the opportunity. However, Hera sends a gadfly. If I can figure out what that is, I'll attach a picture of it here, but I, I have no clue what a gadfly is. Anyways, so she sends a gadfly down, which attacks the cattle and disperses them. Hercules has to run around trying to round these guys up. And when Herc does capture them all and returns them to King Eurythius, Eurythius sacrifices the cattle to Hera. A big fuck you if you ask me. Next, Eurythius sent Hercules to steal 
steal Hera's wedding gift to Zeus. It's a set of golden apples guarded by a group of nymphs known as Hesperides. This task was extremely difficult. Herc had to wander around in order to find the sacred garden. On his journey, he ended up finding Prometheus, who was a trickster that stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans. Zeus had condemned the trickster to spend the rest of his immortal life chained to a rock and having an eagle come every day to eat its liver, which kept growing back. That is, until Herc came along, killed the eagle, and released Prometheus from his prison. Prometheus was so grateful that he told Herc that the easiest way to get the golden apples was to ask the Titan Atlas to steal the apples from the garden. Now, Atlas was a Titan who held up the sky and he'd been carrying this burden for eons. So he was happy to let her hold the sky for a little while while he went and got the golden apples. Now, when he returned with the apples, he asked her if he would mind, you know, just uh, finishing out his sentence for him and holding up the sky for all of eternity. Herc, not wanting to incur the Titan's wrath while he was still holding onto the sky, slyly agrees, but asks Atlas to hold the sky while he adds some extra padding to his shoulders to make the burden a bit easier. When Atlas puts down the apples and picks the sky back up, Hercules quickly grabs the apples and runs away, leaving the Titan to continue holding his burden. Now, after Herc shows the apples to King Eurythius, he immediately returns the apples back to its home. Now, for his final challenge, Hercules traveled to the underworld to kidnap Cerberus. Hang on one second. There we go. I don't know why I think I can do my lipstick while I talk. If Bailey can't do it, I don't think I can. Anyways, for his final challenge, Hercules traveled to the underground to capture the creature Cerberus, a three-headed dog that was guarding the gates to the underworld. Once again, Herc decided to go with the honesty fruit and asked Hades directly if he could take the creature up to show King Eurythius. Hades agreed, provided that the hero captured the creature without killing or wounding it. Hercules manages to capture Cerberus by using his superhuman strength to wrestle the dog to the ground. After showing the creature to King Eurythius, the dog returned to the underworld unharmed. Now, after completing the 12 labors, Hercules had a number of other adventures. He even ends up getting married to a woman named Dianeira. She loves him so much that she weaves a cloak for him, but is tricked by a centaur to rub a bomb into the cloak. Now this bomb is poisonous, and when Herc puts the cloak on, it ends up bonding the cloak to his skin and burns him nonstop. Hercules can't bear the continuous pain, so he asks his friends to burn him on a pyre and kill him to end his suffering. As the gods watch Hercules burn on the pyre, Zeus turns to Hera and says, this is enough. This hero has suffered enough and I think he's proven that he is worthy. Hera agrees and decides to end her anger towards the hero. When Herc dies, Zeus immediately sends Athena to collect him in his chariot and bring him up to Olympus where he spends the rest of his days. Well, that had to be the most well-rounded story I've told yet. There was some unjust suffering, some dick moves on Hercules' part, but in the end, Hercules was forgiven by Hera and stayed in paradise for the rest of his afterlife. Many versions of the story differ, but it's estimated that it took Hercules 15 years to complete the labor, which to me is just crazy. I always find Greek myths so fascinating because while there are stories to us now, at one time, this was a whole society's religion. Can you imagine living life thinking at any moment that a uh, god could just come down and mess with you? Wild. Also, imagine claiming your child was fathered by Zeus. 
Would there just be a thunderbolt where the father's name should be on a birth certificate? If you like Greek stories as much as I do, I highly recommend checking out John Solo's YouTube channel. He creates a lot of videos condensing these myths and stories in a really enjoyable way. I will also leave him linked down below with Bailey and Robert. Well, that was the story of Hercules and his 12 labors. And this is my look inspired by the myth. I was kind of going for like the golden apple and um, the oranges just because, you know, in the Disney movie, Hercules was a ginger. So orange just felt right. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of the labors and if you think Hercules deserved them. Because I don't really think he did. He definitely didn't deserve Hera's persecution. But I feel like 12 labors was a bit much to atone for something that he really had no control over. But I'd love to know what you guys think about this as well. Also, let me know if you have any suggestions for what story I should do next. If you like this video, if you like my vibe, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take it easy. Eurystheus. 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 Oh. Honey, you mean hunky-lee.